Hello, welcome to my blog, Edis English Literature. Today, I am going to discuss about romantic period or the romanticality of the romantic period or what makes romantic period romantic. So let's begin our discussion about romantic. First of all, the romantic movement that has been often defined as second renaissance is both a revolt and revival. A revolt for the very classical or the pre neoclassical period has been with the burden of carrying all sort of classical things and making them as if they are own and these are the burden that the present sort of poetry is unwilling to carry and they shifted from this to that of a kind of revive revive the love for nature it's there is no artificiality it is a true from their heart they want to leave the burden of classical features or the classical tendencies of pick of something which is not genuine but true to heart or they are rather eager to accept what is true to heart what is telling their heart and what is a true humanism according to them so the movement that we popularly know in literature romantic is an imported idealism and it has been imported to uh, england from european political sources and it has been uh, the tendency, the movement that carried with a feeling that uh, the search for freedom and that freedom is not only free will of heart but freeness from the traditions and the tyranny that they carry. Open, we the civilized people are sometimes uh, don't have the luxury of feeling that our tradition is right or wrong but they have questioned these traditions and they questioned the very tyranny underneath which is they are not liking at all and that's why there is a revolt and that romantic movement not only revives the feelings of humanism in us which were uh, rather a face-saving one earlier or classicist earlier become a reviving spirit in literature also. The poetical ideals of the love, beauty, the emotions, the imaginations that we are all fascinated with, the romance, the beauty of nature, everything is so appealing and the romantic of the romanticism has started drumming throughout the English source. Obviously, it has crossed the English channel. As you all know, it all started in Europe. Later, is, later it shifted to France, from French to British Empire. Now, as the romanticism comes in, the romantic poet started celebrating in a new way, in a new feature. They started celebrating beauty, kids. The beauty in kids' words, beauty becomes in another strata. Shelley adores love. Wordsworth glorifies nature. And Byron ideal, idealizes humanism. You know, the poet Scott tries to revive the medieval load, the musicality and coldage amalgamates, the supernaturalism with that of romanticism. As a result, a new beginning, a revolution. And that is the romantic movement. 
revolt against those old age idealisms ideals those classical principles the intellectualism the aristocracy the mechanicality of all such augustan period and it paves a smooth way a broad smooth way a emotional gallery that hammers and put into pieces the rigidity of form decorum they build new empires they build new empires with a new thought and a string of thoughts are woven by single notion that is romanticism and that romanticism are parallel to meaning of love to nature love to humanity a broad perspective of modern day romanticism humanity. and french revolution uh, in a sense are synonymous the return to nature that has been popular slogan for romantic poetry or romantic revival is a slogan made by rousseau rousseau's social theory has emboldened or rather embodies this particular familiar phrase the battle cry of revolution french revolution has been three words as we all know liberty equality and fraternity these three principles are very influential towards the young generation of romantic poets the youthful imagination of romantic poets were invested by these four principles the french revolution theorem of liberty equality and fraternity and the return to nature the very phrase by rousseau now all these things rousseau sentimental influence uh, french revolutionary theorem everything has touched the english poets and so to begin black wordsworth coleridge and the intellectual influence on godwin and through godwin there comes shelley then byron shelley also shared the championship of liberty the revolutionary idealism everything is there so if we look into the romantic poetry you will find there is some revolutionary idealism and where from this revolutionary idealism pop up from french revolution a wonderful humanitarian enthusiasm and a gorgeous dream of humanity a progressive humanity and protection and perfection protection for humanity and perfection towards that goal of better humanity we are boiling up each and every human soul young souls that is obviously the souls of the young creators the poets this is the central creed this is the central point of romantic poetry and that romantic poetry has prophesized a new cry they have prophesized a new day a forwarding immediately into a democratic idealism the triumph of a prophecy oh wind if winter comes can spring be far behind can you remember that line from ode to the west wind by sally yeah so this is a goal towards that liberty through love to nature through loving human soul and for the betterment of humanity the ultimatum of liberty and that is possible and that has been possible from a 
launching pad of romanticism and that we can find out a beginning uh, through the various poets that is called romantic poetry. To tell you another thing in romantic poetry is its invest on emotions. If you are a better human, you must shed tears. If you are a better human, you must cry, you must laugh with that of fellow neighbors. You cannot suppress your feelings, your desires. So the exercise of emotion is the ultimate liberty of soul and that is made possible in romantic poetry. And the feature of romantic poetry that we can roughly say is its one of the best features is its emotionalism. Emotionalism means if you search in poetry of uh, different writers of romantic period, you can find out effusion of feelings, emotions, heartfelt appreciation of beauty in all form, human form, love to humanity, love to nature, everywhere there is emotions. And it is spontaneous and natural, that is mo most key, that is not artificial as in the neoclassical period. And it is no levered exercise, nothing, it is spontaneous. So, liberty, liberty of soul, love to nature accompanied with emotion. So these uh, are the journey that romanticism continues with. Next comes the lyricism. If there is no musicality in the simplicity of the simplest word used, there is no romantic poetry. There is no burden of intellectuality or satirical uh, jargon. The basic preoccupation of romantic poetry is its lyrical features, the simplicity of the word choices with, it, with its emotional expression. What we feel, what my mind says, how sentimental am I or how sentimental am I towards someone or somebody or something is the very ultimate desire that the, that the uh, romantic poets has exhibited. If you can invest your time reading romantic poetry, you will find that there are lyrics, songs, sonnets, words and such kind of poem uh, which is called or which is within the ambit of romantic poetry and they ha all have a certain kind of music, a music of humanity I say. Just find out Wordsworthian poetry, Coleridge poetry or Shelley, Keats, Byron, they are all famous for its lyrical expressions. And their lyrics have the subjectivity, they are speaking of their own mind, have the emotions, they drop tears, they say foul, they say wrong, they say right, they have no burden of at all of idealism or any kind of fake attitude. They have the impulse and they have the free play of imagination. Such intensity of feeling can be read in every poetry. Uh, just, say, uh, just say an example of Shelley's to a skylark. We look before and after and pine for what is not. Our sincere laughter with some pain is fraught. Our sweetest songs are those that tells of saddest thoughts. So, where can you find such a lyrical grace other than this romantic As poetry? We have already discussed that nature as if 
a living entity in romantic poetry. It comes to a new light. Nature has been explained in thousand possible connotations. Nature for the romantic poet not only includes the beauty, it includes landscape, trees, plants, hills, rivers, mountains as well as rural frogs together with their cottages, sheep, goats, rural festivals, everything is included in the ambit of nature. Kit sensualizes its nature. Shelley has some intellectual investment in it. Wordsworth, Wordsworth has something uh, spiritual or something mystic nature. And Byron, Byron had the revolutionary idealism in nature. The media village, the kind of a magic adventure night duels, battles, tournaments, voyages over uncharted seas and these are the storehouse of romantic poets. Coldage creates a make-believe world. Just imagine how beautiful Kubli Khan is. Abyss. Kids explores Hellenism because the Greek fascinates him. He is a Greek born in England. Just find out in what do night angle. Apart from this, it's like that of a painting, romantic poetry, pictorial quality. Words are, are like that of a stroke of a painting brush. Beautiful phrases. Extensive use of poetic imagery, language, diction, even though they are simple. Even the words of the simple mass has been chosen as a uh, as their means of uh, romantic poetry. So, not to make this lecture very uh, long enough, I like to conclude. Romantic poetry is way or miles apart from that of neoclassical age. Even though romantic poetry, the journey of the romantic poetry has a sudden stop with the or the outcome of the romantic poetry had has its uh, limitation when when Queen Victoria came into throne and the spirit the spirit of the romanticism still going underneath. With the Victorian era, the revolution, with the industrial revolution, everything has been, uh, everyone is being uh, going after money or wealth. So, uh, the simple and uh, send the thinking towards nature and humanity, the very matrix or the design of romantic poetry got disbalanced quite a bit but underneath the if you can invest your time reading romantic poetry you will find that there are lyrics songs sonnets words and such kind of poem uh, which is called or which is within the ambit of romantic poetry and they ha all have a certain kind of music, a music of humanity I say. Just find out Wordsworthian poetry, Coleridge poetry or Shelley, Keats, Byron, they are all famous for its lyrical expressions and their lyrics have the subjectivity, they are speaking of their own mind have the emotions, they drop tears, they say foul, they say wrong, they say right, they have no burden of at all of idealism 
or any kind of fake attitude. They have the impulse and they have the free play of imagination. Such intensity of feeling can be read in every poetry. Uh, just, say, uh, just say an example of Shelley's to a Skylark. We look before and after and pine for what is not. Our sincere laughter with some pain is fraught. Our sweetest song are those that tells of saddest thoughts. So, where can you find such a lyrical grace other than this romantic poetry? The media village, the kind of a magic adventure, night duels, battles, tournaments, voyages over uncharted seas. And these are the storehouse of romantic poets. Coldage creates a make believe world. Just imagine how beautiful Kubli Khan is, how beautiful Tintan Abbey is. Kids explores Hellenism because the Greek fascinates him. He is a Greek born in England. Just find out in what do night angle. Apart from this, it is like that of a painting, romantic poetry, pictorial quality. Words are, are like that of a stroke of a painting brush. Beautiful phrases, extensive use of poetic imagery, language, diction, even though they are simple. Even the words of the simple mass has been chosen as a uh, as their means of uh, romantic poetry. Uh, so, these are the main features of romantic poetry. Uh, we can further discuss uh, about romantic poetry in its classification of early romantics and later romantics and the volume of uh, literary texts, particularly poetry. Uh, which is classified as uh, romantic poetry in our next half of the le lecture. Um, by by now, uh, the video has become a long one, so um, you can have this for at now, but uh, you can log in at any time uh, in my blog to get access to our romantic poetry and type, uh, other topics. Uh, you can search my uh, blog www.ordentude.blogspot.com You can also log in here and subscribe. Uh, here also in my blog you can subscribe and uh, get the regulated posts regarding various weekly topics. Bye bye now.